We have a pair of widows in our lessons today. And even our psalm, if you notice, mentions how God has particular concern for aliens and orphans and widows. For those are groups of people that are most vulnerable in our society, both in the Bible times and in our own times as well. My 97-year-old mother has been widowed for some 21 years now. And the last time I visited her in Florida, I helped her select and purchase a new laptop computer. Because, you see, she likes to see all the pictures of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and she even has one great-great-grandchild, to see those pictures posted on Facebook. But recently, one day when she turned on her computer, the screen suddenly locked up and a flashing sign came on warning her that her security was out of date and that she needed to call this certain number. So she called them and gave her checking account information before she realized that this was a scam. Then she called me in a panic and asked me what to do. So I told her to call her bank immediately, and fortunately they were able to close her account before anyone could rob her. But that incident reminded me of how vulnerable an elderly widow can be even in our own times. It was even more so in the days when the Bible was first written. For in those times, only persons, the only persons who had legal status in Jewish society were adult males. A woman needed an adult male to speak up for her and represent her in all legal matters, either a father when she was young, a husband when she married, and an adult son after she became widowed. Without some male in her life, a woman had no legal standing. That is why in our first reading, the widow in the city of Zarephath, in the land of Sidon, was so vulnerable. Yes, she had a son, but he was not yet of age. And so neither of them had any legal status. And therefore, she was out gathering a few sticks to make a little fire to cook her last bit of flour and oil into a final meal for her and her son. And after they consumed all that was left, then she had resigned herself that they would just have to give up and die of starvation because they had no one else to sustain them. In the meantime, the Hebrew prophet Elijah fled to the land of Sidon because, you see, he'd gotten in trouble with the Jewish king for speaking too bluntly and warning about the drought that was coming that would lead to widespread famine. There's something about rulers that they don't seem to like someone who speaks the truth to them, especially if that truth is not something they want to hear. Now, Elijah didn't go to the wealthiest household in Zarephath to ask for their help. Instead, he approached this poor widow for help while she was out gathering her sticks. And remember that she was not Jewish. She was from another race. She told Elijah that she was fixing the last meal for her and her son. And yet she was still willing to share what little she had with Elijah. I have often observed that that's the way many poor people are. What little they have, they share generously. 
For example, on my first trip to visit the Lutheran Church in Colombia, which is a companion synod of ours, Colombia, South America, a trip that Pastor Mary Finkley went on with me, part of our visit was to the city of Quibdo, which is the capital of the state of Chocó on Colombia's Pacific coast. Now, Chocó is a region that is very rich in natural resources, gold and emeralds and other resources. It's also a region of Colombia inhabited almost entirely by Afro-Colombians and indigenous native tribes. And these groups of people have faced a lot of violence by unscrupulous forces trying to access the gold and the other resources. As a result, large numbers of people have been displaced from their ancestral homes after being threatened by rebel forces or paramilitaries. Sometimes they fled their homes after one or more members of their family have been killed. And they come in from the countryside into the safety and refuge of the city of Kibdo. But being uneducated rural peasants, they have no real job skills. Now, in the center of Kibdo, there was a group of these displaced women, elderly widows and single mothers, perhaps their husbands had been killed by the armed actors. And as I said, they had very little education or skills. But the Lutheran World Federation had given them a grant that enabled them to work together and to open a little cafe right in the center of town. And that's where we went every morning when we were in Kibdo for breakfast. And I have to tell you, they serve the best cafe con leche that I've ever tasted in my life. And these displaced women created such a warm and welcoming environment that their little cafe became one of the most popular gathering places in Kibdo. And I remember that first morning when we went there for breakfast that they said to us, Bienvenidos, welcome. Consider this your home. And that touched me so deeply because I knew that these were women who'd been homeless, who'd been driven from their homes, and yet they wanted to share with us generously from what little they had. There is something about people who've lost everything, homes and land and family members, that they realize the value of sharing. These women had been blessed by a grant from the church when they had lost absolutely everything. And now they wanted to give back from what little they did have. Which leads us to the second of our two biblical widows this morning. This time from the gospel. Jesus points out to his disciples the witness of a poor widow who put two small copper coins into the treasury box. According to Jesus, it was all that she had to live on. Because remember that a widow alone in that society had no resources. And then Jesus compares her action to that of the wealthy men who are looked up to as leaders in the community, Some of them may even have made their money by taking advantage of widows like her, like whoever it was that hacked into my mother's laptop. Jesus notes that these men only give out of their abundance, out of their disposable income, out of their leftovers. In other words, even though the amount they gave was larger than the widow's total, the percentage of their assets that they gave was much smaller than hers. For the widow gave everything she had. 
the men gave only a mere token of their wealth in comparison. I heard a report on the radio this week on one of my drives back and forth from Columbia that said the average American donates about 2% of their income to all charities. Now, I'm sure many of you are much more generous than that. But the point of this story is not to make anyone feel guilty about how much they give or don't give. Rather, it's all about our attitude to trust in God's providence. You see, the wealthy scribes in the story had this sense of pride in themselves and how much they had accomplished. They thought they deserved their blessings because of how good they were and how hard they'd worked. And yes, they were willing to toss a little token away because, after all, they were self-made men. The widow, on the other hand, knew that she was totally dependent on God's grace. There was absolutely no way that she could pretend that she was capable of rescuing herself from her dire circumstances. No amount of pluck on her part would create a fairy tale ending to her story like in a movie. God wants us to realize that no matter our circumstances, no matter how hard we work or how successful we are, ultimately we are totally dependent on God's grace. We are, all of us, like that widow. For no matter how much we possess, it's not enough. But God's grace, God's grace is sufficient for all our needs.